Exodus chapter 26, verses 12 to 23. That's uh, 11 verses. I'm going to read them out. Genesis 26, 12 to 23. Then Isaac planted seed in that land as a farmer and reaped in the same year a hundred times as much as he had planted. And the Lord blessed and favored him. And the man Isaac became a great, became great and gained more and more until he was very wealthy and extremely distinguished. He owned flocks and herds and a great household with a number of servants and the Philistines envied him. Now all the wells which his father's servants had dug in the day of Abraham's father, the Philistines stopped up by filling them with dirt. Then Abimelech said to Isaac, Go away from here, because you are far too powerful for us. So Isaac left the region and camped in the valley of Gerar and settled there. Now Isaac again dug and reopened the wells of water, which had been dug in the days of Abraham his father, because the Philistines had filled them up with dirt after the death of Abraham. And he gave the wells the same names that his father had given them. But when Isaac's servants dug in the valley and found there was a well of flowing spring water, the herdsmen of Gerar quarreled with Isaac's herdsmen, saying, The water is ours. So Isaac named the well Ezek, quarreling, because they quarreled with him. And then his servants dug another well, and they quarreled over that also. So Isaac named it Sitna, meaning enmity. He moved away from there and dug another well. And there they did not quarrel over that one. So he named it Rehoboth, which means a broad place, saying, For now the Lord has made room for us, and we shall be prosperous in the land. And the Lord appeared to him in the same night and said, I am the Lord. I am the God of Abraham, your father. Do not be afraid, for I am with you. I will bless you and favor you and multiply your descendants for the sake of my servant Abraham. Amen. Amen. Uh, now, you remember I told you that today's message is about holiness, right? And uh, we're looking at uh, Isaac. We're looking at Isaac. The title of today's message is the, the Realities of a Pilgrim's Life. And we're looking at this man, Isaac. We're looking at this man, Isaac. One of the patriarchs, one of the patriarchs. And uh, yet uh, he was a man who lived in the shadows. You know, because we hear all about uh, the exploits of Abraham and the exploits of uh, Jacob, right? But uh, we do not hear about many exploits of Isaac. You don't hear many, about many exploits of Isaac. He lived in the shadow of his great father and in the shadow of his great son. Uh, you know, when you look at the Old Testament, uh, Abraham is the star of 14 chapters in the book of Genesis. Yeah, I'm talking about the book of Genesis. 14 chapters are devoted to Abraham. And uh, Jacob figures in another 12 chapters. Uh, Isaac, you only find in a, a few chapters. Not, nothing like 12 and 14, just a few chapters. And here in chapter 26, we, uh, we read a bit about him. We read more about Isaac than anywhere else. And that's the section that I just read. So we catch a glimpse of uh, the life how God works in the life of this man. Uh, you know, many of us also live in the shadows. Huh? So I was thinking, uh, we don't, uh, yeah, maybe I should say, I, I have not done many exploits for God or in the name of God, right? And uh, yet we see that uh, Compared to other men of God, when we compare him to other men of God, we don't see him, uh, you know, achieving so many things for God. We don't see that happening. But uh, 
But all that matters, what really matters is that uh, even though Isaac lived in the shadows, he lived in the light of God. Even though he lived in the shadows, he lived in the light of God. And that's all that matters. That's all that matters. Because God saw him. God saw him. And you know, I often marvel at the way God, Almighty God of heaven, introduces himself. He says, I am the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. So just look at that. You know, just look at that. It is the creator introducing himself through his creation. So just look at how much value he gives to his creation. Almighty God, who exists in eternity, is introducing himself in the name of a few men who lived for a very short period on this planet. And Isaac is one among them. Isaac is one among them. So uh, Isaac's importance does not lie in the fact that he is uh, related to Abraham and to Jacob, but in the fact that he is how he is related to God. So that is why he is important to us today. Not because of the fact that he is the son of Abraham and the father of Jacob, but because he established a wonderful, holy relationship with Almighty. That is why we're looking at Isaac. Because when you look at Isaac, he's a, an insignificant person. Nothing special about him. But he was significant for Almighty God. And why was that? Because he was faithful. Because he was holy. Regardless of whatever happened. Whatever happened. He was always holy in his life. And that is why God considered him. And God valued him. That's why God valued him. You know, when we... You know, usually when you're introducing yourself in a new place, you you always uh, uh, you try to uh, you say that I am so and so's so and so. Right? You know, you take a, if you know the some big man in that locality, and you you can say that I am his uh, neighbors or his uh, cousins or something like that. You know, that's the way we do it. And Almighty God is introducing Himself using the name of mere men, mere men. And, but that is how valuable how much importance God gives to these three men okay so one thing we can definitely say is that he was a man of faith he was a man of faith in fact uh, in Hebrews 11:20, he is listed among the greatest heroes of the Faithful. He's listed among the greatest heroes of the faithful. And uh, we can also see that uh, he's just like the rest of us. You know, he has made he has made mistakes in his life. You know, we know how you know, just like his father Abraham did, just like his father Abraham, you know, he goes and he uh, he lies about his wife. You know, he doesn't tell the truth about his wife. So he because he's scared, so he's just an ordinary human being, but he was faithful to God, he was holy before God. And that is all that matters. And basically, you know, these men were uh, pilgrims. They were literally pilgrims. They were shepherds and they were pilgrims. And being uh, a shepherd, I mean, they lived off the, the sheep, the goats. And uh, so they could not settle down in one place permanently. They had to keep moving as their flocks needed grass and nourishment. So he was he was a, a pilgrim in every sense of the word. He wasn't literally staying in one place in a fix, living there, his whole life in one single place. He was a pilgrim. He was a pilgrim. And uh, the Bible actually reminds us that we are strangers and pilgrims in this world. That's who we are. We are pilgrims in this world. You know, whatever, however we act or whatever we think, we are pilgrims in this world. And uh, the word stranger means uh, a foreigner, one who lives in a place without the right of citizenship. That's how the dictionary defines uh, a, a foreigner. A stranger, one who lives in a place without the right to citizenship. 
and the word pilgrim means uh, sojourning in a strange place someone who lives in a place that is not his own someone who lives in a place that is not his own and so one who lives on earth so we the earth does not belong to us right the earth does not belong to us you know, we think that property belongs to us houses belong to us land belongs to us the earth does not belong to us we are sojourners we are pilgrims and our citizenship is in heaven, right? Our citizenship is in heaven. It's not on earth. It's not on earth. So we're going to look at this man, Isaac, who was holy in the eyes of God. He was holy in the eyes of God. Because he encountered many of the problems that most of us encounter in our life. So that's what we're going to look at this at today. We're going to look at the realities of a pilgrim's life. Now, first of all, what we need to understand about a pilgrim's life, Isaac's life, was that it was a life full of provisions. Because, because being a pilgr pilgrim, he does not sink his roots into any one place. He's always on the move. But all his needs were met. All his needs were met because of his faith in Almighty God. That's why all these needs were met. And in the section that we read, we uh, we read how he enjoyed, you know, it was a time of famine and uh, all other people were thinking of leaving the place, right? They're leaving the place. But Isaac uh, is in communion with God and God tells him to stay. He stays, he goes ahead, he goes ahead uh, planting his crops and taking care of his sheep. And we see that he had a, a hundredfold return, right? 10,000%, 10,000% profit. You know, everyone else is leaving what they have and going to, for, looking for greener pastures, but he remains in this famine hit land and he makes a whooping profit. He makes a huge, massive profit because he was willing to listen to so everyone else was going broke and Isaac alone prospered. Everyone was going broke. That's why they wanted to leave the place. And no food, no water, nothing. But Isaac remained and he prospered. His crops flourished. His uh, flock flourished. Everything flourished. And uh, the source of these, of these provisions, of course, was Almighty. The fact that he chose to trust in God, he chose to trust in God. You know, not doing what everyone else is doing, that's also hard, you know, because the tendency is to do what everyone else does, isn't it? We, we go with the flow, we go with the herd. And Isaac was one man who said, no, I'm not going to do what everyone else is doing. I'm going to stay here because God has told me to. So he must have looked like a fool to all the other guys, but no. He, in the end, he is the one who became the winner. He's the one who became the winner. So uh, God blessed him. He wasn't a better farmer or he didn't have a better knowledge of botany or horticulture or zoology or any of these things. But he had a great understanding of God and that made all the difference. That made all the difference. So this was the advantage that he had. And that advantage that he had translated into blessings in his life. It was that advantage that he had in believing in Almighty God that translated into blessings. While everyone else's knowledge translated into failure, his knowledge translated into blessings. Into blessings. And obedience. So it was obedience to God. It was obedience that led to blessing. Obedience that led to blessing. So in the midst of the famine, he is blessed. He is being blessed. And uh, so this is the source of our provisions also. Almighty God is the source of our provisions. He is the God, our source of our provisions. Even when there is a famine, even when everybody else is suffering or there is a lack, 
all around. You know, we talk of recession. You hear of recession all the time, right? Especially nowadays. Uh, yeah, Germany is going into recession. I, I was going to mention that. I just read, just read that around two days ago. Yeah, recession. And uh, so, when you're faithful to God, when you're holy with God, holy to God, God takes care of every single thing. So God honored His obedience. So each of us is in this situation. Each of us is in this situation. You know, we go through the recessions. We go through economic recessions. But let us, all we need to worry about is being holy before God. He will take care of everything. Because we are here to do His business. We're not here to do our business. Whatever we might think and feel, we're not here to do our business. We're, doing, we're here to do His business. And if we are holy before Him, He will take care of everything. So we might feel, you know, as believers, we might think that I'm not making a a hundred hundred percent profit from what I'm getting on what I'm doing. You know, you, you might feel that way. We might feel that way. But then let us actually look at our life. We need to see our life. We need to look at our lives with God's eyes, because material blessing alone is not a sign of God's blessing. It is not a sign of God's blessing. So, any time you look at it, you know, first of all, we need to remember that we have a relationship with the Creator of the world. We have a relationship with the Creator of the world. And what, are, what do we have? We have something called salvation. And if we remain holy, we will never lose that salvation. We will never lose that salvation. And the presence of God in our lives, we are never alone. We are never alone. And the power of God working in every hopeless situation. God's power. God's power in every hopeless situation. And the Word of God to guide us. So the power of God, the Word of God, all these things, the salvation that God has given us, these are all blessings. Let us, know, let us not lose sight of them. Let us not lose sight of them. And even if we have family members who do not know Him, we can pray for them and He will work in their lives. He will work in their lives. So we could make a lot of lists, a long list of the blessings that a believer has. But we're not going to do that. So to come back to Isaac, Isaac enjoyed blessings because he was obedient. He enjoyed blessings because he was obedient. And let us put God first. Let us good put God first. Because if we put God first, what's he going to do? He will take care of everything that concerns us. You know, we might, we, each one of us has many, many issues. Right? Each one of us has so many needs. So many needs. It's not one need. It's not one need, but as far, as far as the believer is concerned, we have only one duty. And what is that? To be obedient and be holy before God. And He will take care of all our needs. He will take care of all our needs. That's a wonderful, that's a wonderful assurance, right? I only need to be bothered about one thing. Where do I stand in God's eyes? What does God see when He sees me? Does He see a faithful child? Or does He see a backslider? That's all I need to be worried about. And he will take care of everything. He will take care of everything. Because, uh, you know, nobody said that life is going to be easy. Life is not going to be easy. In fact, the Bible tells us that life is not going to be easy. Especially if we walk with Jesus, life is not going to be easy. But we don't need to worry about any of those things. Let's just be holy before him. And he will take care of everything. So, even... Uh, you know, what looks like the worst disaster that you have ever seen can be turned into a blessing. That's the way God works, you know. The worst disaster you can imagine can be turned into a blessing. Even that can be turned into a blessing. That's the way God works. That's the way God works. So, Isaac's life was a life of plenty of provisions and it was also a life of, with plenty of problems. Just mention the provisions first. 
but the problems are also there. You know, we read in those verses, you know, it was always, he had so many enemies, he had so many enemies. The Philistines were jealous of Isaac. Why were they jealous of him? Because they could see the hand of God blessing him. That's why they were jealous of him, because they could see the hand of God blessing him. He was living, he was pros prospering while they were struggling. Isaac was prospering while the Philistines were struggling. Naturally, they got jealous of him. They got angry with him. And uh, even Abimelech, their king, you know, he, he, he kicks Isaac out. He says, go away, because says, go away from here. Don't stay here. And he even sends Isaac out. And Isaac, what does he do? He humbly leaves. You know, because the king is telling him to go, he just moves on. He just moves on. And uh, because the Lord's pilgrims have never been accepted or understood by the world. The Lord's pilgrims have never been accepted or understood by the world. So if you're very popular with the world, there's something wrong. Okay? If you're very popular with unbelievers, there is something wrong. Okay? Yes. Yes. There is something wrong. Because... That's not the way the Bible talks about a believer's life. That's not the way the Bible talks about a believer's life. So, so they were jealous of him. They were angry with him. Uh, okay, and they want to rob us of our blessings. They want to rob us of our blessings and our peace of mind. They want to rob us of everything. And that's what we see, you know, Isaac, all these wells that Abraham had dug and the wells that Isaac dug, the Philistines are coming and plugging them, filling them up, right? They're making trouble. They're saying that, no, this is ours, this is ours, go away, go away from here. So the Philistines are making as much trouble as they can for Isaac. But Isaac never becomes discouraged. Do we read about Isaac becoming discouraged do we read about Isaac going into crisis mode and thinking oh, everything is over I haven't hurt anybody I haven't uh, insulted anybody but look at what's happening to me no he just he just moves on he just moves on so he was honoring God you know because as far as Isaac was concerned the injustice of what the Philistines were doing did not matter to him because he knew that God could see what they were doing to him. And that's all that mattered. God could see what they were doing to him. And that's all that mattered. That is why he could remain in holiness. That is why he could remain in holiness. If he decided that he was going to, you know, protect his reputation, <laughs> he was going to protect his reputation and he was going to uh, tell the Philistines about justice and what was right and what was wrong. We don't see him doing anything of the sort. He doesn't do anything of the sort. He just moves on. He keeps his mouth shut. He praises God and he moves on. He was honoring God. He was honoring God. So, and we see that all those wells, that when we talked about those wells, right? And we need to remember that in those days, uh, wells were very, very important because water is, you know, all life depends on water all lives and flocks especially flocks people everything needs water and so uh, plugging a well or filling up a well is an act of war it is an act of war because wells are so valuable wells are so valuable so valuable because you cannot live without water especially in this kind of a land it's a semi-desert land and nobody ever fills up a well but Philistines were filling up the wells that, that uh, Abraham dug. And uh, so what you need to understand there is, you know, they needed, the Philistines needed water. They needed the water. But they did not want Isaac to use the water. And that is why they were filling it up. Just imagine. They need water. They need water. Because they have flocks. They need water just like just like the Israelites do, just like Isaac does. But they filled up the water so that Isaac would not 
lay claim to. So look at that, you know, you, you can see the malice, the malice, you know, we talk of with, with malice a forethought, you know, it's, I think it's with malice a forethought, you know, we, you have malice in your mind and you do something. And that's exactly what the Philistines are doing, but no retaliation by Isaac. Because Isaac was only concerned about one thing, I have to be holy before God. God sees what is happening to me. God sees everything that's happening. He will take care of my reputation. He is the one who gave my father all this wealth, who gave me all this wealth. He will take care of my flocks. He will take care of my family. He will take care of everything. And uh, in fact, this uh, un, you know, land that was not occupied by anyone was considered God's land. Anyone could use it. Anyone could dig a well. Anyone could use it. But these Philistines were plugging up the wells that Isaac had. So they were committing an act of war. And yet Isaac never fights with them. Never fights with them. He just, what does he do? He cleans out the old wells. You know, the old wells that belonged to his father, that his father dug and the Philistines filled up. He cleans them again. He digs them out again. So just look at the look at the humility yeah. of Isaac, you know. He is digging, he's clearing out a well that his father dug, and this well was a blessing for that locality. But the Philistines filled up those wells just to spite him, just to spite him. And yet he digs them up again. He digs them up again. So you see the humility of this man. And uh, he had to clear out these old wells. And uh, you know, Abraham had dug them, hoping that his son would be able to use them, right? And father's property passes to the son. But uh, the Philistines did not want that to happen. And yet, even there, he was just allowing. He was. He was, he was doing his duty. He was not fighting the Philistines. He was not fighting the Philistines. He was not retaliating against the Philistines. So we need to remember that uh, God's name is what we honor. When we call ourselves Christians, when we are trying to justify and explain, we are not bringing glory to God's name. We are bringing glory to God's name when we keep our mouths shut and we do what we need to. And a lot of things used by the church, a lot of spiritual things used by the church have been hijacked by the world. You know, we can look at this filling up of wells as uh, spiritual treasures that our ancestors enjoyed and learned and passed on to us have been hijacked by the world. You know, just like... This, uh, I think the celebration of Christmas and Easter are all good ideas of this, you know. All these have been hijacked by the world. They don't know what Christmas actually is. They don't know that Santa Jesus, Claus. you know, they think it's all about Santa Claus, right? It's all about Santa Claus. It's got nothing to do with Jesus Christ. Absolutely nothing. And they don't even know that Jesus Christ was born only to die. Yeah. He was not born to live here for a long time. He was born only to die. And every year, they're building cribs and mangers and just doing the same, same, same thing. You know, all these, uh, all these Christian truths have been hijacked by the world. They've been hijacked by the world. And so we need to redig those wells. We need to redig those wells. We need to reclaim those wells. Those are all wells that belong to us, rightfully belong to us. They came from our fathers, from our spiritual fathers. And we need to reclaim them. We need to reclaim them. And you know, we see that even when he digs new wells, he has to fight for his new wells. They're coming and making a scene. They want to take that well away. But, uh, and that's why he names the wells, you know, like Ezek, which means contention, and Sitna, which means strife or hatred. It's only when he digs his last well, which is uh, that uh, there was, the Philistines did not come to pester him and to trouble him. That's why he named it Rehoboth, you know, because it was a 
broad place. They left him alone. They did not trouble him after that. So it was at Rehoboth that the Philistines left Isaac alone. And until then, they were trying to take away what he had labored to make, what his father had labored to make for him. The Philistines were trying to track, take away all that, but he did not do anything. He did not retaliate. So, so in uh, Isaac's life, it was one fight after the other, one fight after the other, because without water, there is no life in that in any part of the world, especially in that part of the world, because they have huge flocks which they need to which they need to water, which they need to water. So, and uh, finally, you know, a life of uh, provisions, a life of uh, of problems, and it was also a life of privileges. It was also a life of privileges, only because of one thing, because. His eyes were on God. That's how it became a life of privileges. Otherwise, if his eyes were not on God, if his eyes were on protecting his father's property, protecting his name, protecting his image, there would not be a life of privilege. But because his eyes were on God, and he only wanted to honor God, it was a life of privilege. So what happens? The Lord appears to him and said, tells him, I'm going to bless you. I'm going to bless you. I'm going to take care of you. The, the, the father, the promise that I gave to your father, I give to you as well. The whole world. And we know that the whole world was blessed through Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Jesus Christ was born into that family. And Jesus Christ died for the whole world. So the whole world was blessed through. And even now, even now the whole world is being blessed through these same guys. They're the founders of Israel, right? The founding fathers of the nation of Israel. And Israel is still blessing the world. Still blessing the world. Every, from water, yeah, I told you about that device that makes water out of thin air. In, in, anyway, I mean, whether it is uh, agriculture, whether it is uh, irrigation, whether it's weaponry, even their weapons are just uh, amazing, just amazing. So they are really teaching us, even now, even now, because they have, there are privileged people. Anyhow, that privilege, it started with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And we have the privilege of uh, enjoying God, worshipping God. We have the privilege, you know, all of us are worshipping God because these are our forefathers in the faith. They are our forefathers in the faith. And now we can worship God because of them, because of them. We have the privilege of worshipping God. We have the privilege of enjoying God's world. Yeah, this world was created by Almighty God. The beauty of nature, all the hand of God, the beauty of everything. We, we, we can really enjoy it because we don't think that this is our permanent home and we have to protect it and we have to do this. And no, that, that's what the environmentalists are doing, right? But we know that God has a purpose and God also tells us that he's going to make this world, he's going to renew this world, he's going to recreate this world. That's what the Bible tells us. So we can enjoy this world, knowing that we are responsible stewards. We're responsible stewards of this planet. We can enjoy this world. And we can enjoy God's water. We can enjoy God, the fellowship of our fellow believers. We can worship God together. We can enjoy so, so many things. We can enjoy so many things. All because this life of privilege comes from our holiness before God. We need to be holy before God. Before Isaac, because Isaac was holy before God. That is why we enjoy these privileges. So, as Christians, let's keep marching forward. Let's head it to the city, the eternal city. That's where we're heading. That's where we're headed, to that eternal city. Let, let not our eyes be on the wealth and the comforts and the pleasures of this world, because this is not our permanent home. We are, we are pilgrims here. We are sojourners here. Let's understand that. So, step by step, we are going towards that city, the eternal city. We are the citizens of that city. 
We're citizens of that city. Whatever citizens we have, citizenships we have here is temporary. It's temporary. It's temporary. So let's just keep looking at him. Let us all we need to do is be holy in his sight. Be holy in his sight. He will take care of all our take care of all of us. And we are pilgrims and not settlers. This earth is our inn and not our home. In this is uh, J. H. Vincent. Inn is a, a hotel. I N N. It's a hotel. This earth is our inn and not our home. Let's remember that. And let our eyes be on the eternal city. Because that's where we are headed. 